139 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We get here early every Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Do, do sound, 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 sound. Make sure the choir can hear you. They didn't do what it was. Make sure, Make sure everything's, everything's right, 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 and then you stand up, whatever it is. 139 songs. I don't know where that is. Look at your Bible. We're going to do a song. Get 139. And we just ask ourselves to the sense where is God? How do we relate to God? Is God really anything at all knowledgeable about what takes place in life? Is He around us in our lives? Turn to 139 verse 14 and it says, I pray for you, God, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your words are wonderful, I know that full well. And we ask ourselves this morning, do you know that? Do you really know that in your life? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Some, Some say, say if you think, think about God's creation, 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 cre
where's the dirt and the tractors and the Tonka trucks and the fire trucks and all the BB guns and all the things that you were raised with? Why are you knitting? But practically speaking, we can say that God knitted us together, that he crafted us. He, he created our inmost being. We think about the presence of God, and we're just going to ask, well, how much presence does God have in our life? But we've, we've got to determine when we think about God being sovereign, what does that mean to you? For some, when you say the, speak of the sovereignty of God, you speak of God just creating the heavens and the earth and, and, and casting it into the universes, and it spins, and you just, he just turned his back, and he walked away and said, whatever happens, happens, and one day it will spin out of control, and God will come back and redeem his children. We say that God is sovereign, and he just turns his back on everything. And then we say that God is sovereign. Some feel as though God is sovereign and everything is perfect in his world and everything is created just like he desires for it to be. But I would remind you that was the Garden of Eden. And I'll remind you that that will be heaven where God's ultimate will will be perfected and be done as he desired for it to be. But it seems that we think about God's sovereignty. That we've got to say there's a sovereignty of God that is influenced by man's choice. There's a sovereignty of God that everything is in perfection. Well, obviously, we can look around and live, understand we live in a fallen world, that everything is not in perfection. It will be, amen? And this fight that we're fighting, this struggle that we're in will be over with. And Romans chapter 8 seems to allude to this. I, I, I consider our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, for creation was subjected to frustration. That even in God's sovereignty, which we trust and we hold to and we understand his heart and we trust it, even when the actions don't re revolve around his good and perfect will, we, we, we can still trust his heart. But there seems to be that creation is frustrated that there is an influence, there's an influence of sin, there's an influence that we live in a fallen world. But it's easier for us to say, you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb, and, and then, there, then we must ask the question, well, what about those who are not knitted together that well in their mother's womb? Where is God? Did God turn his back on that life? Or is creation frustrated with the fallenness of man in our lives? But yet in, in our lives, we, 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 we must embrace his work. We must trust his sovereignty. We must trust his heart, his love for us, his care for us, his, his undergirding strength for us in our lives. And I would encourage you to be very careful. Be very careful when bad things happen to good people that we just automatically mark it all as it's God's will. God is there. He's close to the brokenhearted. He helps those that are hurting. But is it God's perfect ultimate will that you suffer? No, no, no. Careful. Does God want to bring good from bad? Yes. Does God want to help us in our time of need, in our in our present suffering, yes, he, he, he wants to walk with us and help us through that. But God's creation, we trust his heart. We trust his heart and we embrace that. But we can move on in on, on, a, on a better note and an easier note and just say that God's creation is, is just simply incredible. God's creation is, is, is sovereign. Yes, you created and you knit me together in my mother's womb and you, you created me. And, but it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Fearfully means that you have worth in God's eyes and in, hopefully in our own eyes. Wonderfully means that, we're, that we are uniquely made. That we are fearfully, that we, that we have worth, that we have value, and that we are wonderfully made, that we are uniquely made. That when you look in the mirror, 
unless you have destroyed what God has made, we look in the mirror and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It says I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I, I know that full well. We're reminded in 1 Corinthians, we looked at this verse several weeks ago, that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. That we honor God with how we live our lives. That we are just simply incredibly made. That we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. So we, we, we value the work that he's done. We value our lives, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that he has created us together in our mother's womb. We value it spiritually. We value the work that he's made spiritually. That's why we have quiet times. That's why we study his word. That's why we spend time in fellowship with him through prayer. Because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're, we're knit together in our mother's womb. We're, our bodies, our lives have a spiritual aspect that we need to care for in our lives. If you work around here, you know that I'm just technologically gifted and just brilliant in that area of life and of work. I can turn my computer on. I can turn it off. I can put my finger over the little button and it lets me into it. Every now and then on a good day, it asks me for my password and I'll have to think really hard about what that password is. And sometimes I can't remember, so I ask my assistant or the Brian who oversees our IT stuff around here. I'm often the one that calls to say, my printer won't work, my computer won't work. And Brian will walk into my office and say, what have you done now? And I, being Bubba, Buddy from Alabama, I, all my life I've listened to WZZK, and which plays what kind of music? Country music. Country before country was cool. It played country music. So the other day I'm riding down the road, my radio's on WZZK, humming along probably to songs I shouldn't hum along to. And all of a sudden, WZZK is playing Christian music. I thought, well, that's nice. They threw a little Christian ease in there for followers of Christ. That's a good. And then it played another one. And then it played another one. And I looked on my radio, and WZZK wasn't country's best or latest country or whatever. It was now Christian worship music, 104.7. I thought, well, mercy. Technology is beating me again. What in the world is taking place? And then I notice that my little radio has an HD1 and an HD2. Didn't know it had that. Don't know how I got to HD2. Took me about a week driving down the road looking at my dash instead of where I was going to realize how I got to HD2. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you. You stumbled across it like I did by accident, didn't you? HD2, 104.7, plays Christian worship music. It's transmitted out of California, the land of fruits and nuts. <laughs> but it's good music. It's stuff we sing on Sunday mornings. Well, how did I get here? How did my radio, and finally I figured out you hit a button, spin a knob, and you get to HD1, HD2. Now, now I realize several stations have HD1 and HD2. Some have HD3 on them. Who knew? Been driving that truck for years now. Never knew it had HD1 or 2 or whatever. It's great music riding down the road to fill your soul with God's Word and worshiping God spiritually it'll enhance your life we our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit we're fearfully and wonderfully made so we value his work spiritually we value his work sexually whether we're single or married or widows or widowers or what we watch and think scripture says that our lives should not have a hint wow what a word a hint of sexual immorality not a hint. 
regardless of where we find ourselves, what phase of life we're in and what cycle of life we're in, that our lives, we should live our lives without a hint of sexual immorality physically in our life, by what we eat or what we drink or how we take care of our physical body. We should value this body as a temple of the Holy Spirit emotionally in our life. God says that I desire for my children to get their proper rest. And on this Sunday, everybody said what? You should say amen. You got an extra hour of sleep last night. In theory, you did. In reality, probably not, because your body's kind of like mine. My body wakes up no matter what time it is when it says it's ready to go. So emotionally, we just we need to care for ourselves. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully. God, you have made something unique. You've made something incredible, and. And, and God, your works are wonderful, and I know you that full well, and I, I want to embrace that. I want to care for them, and I want to value your work. And I understand that your creation, as it looks in my life, your creation is, is personal. Your creation is personal. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. Now, part of that goes back to the to the sovereign sovereignty of God and God's creation and frustrated in creation but we can certainly say and look into our lives that our frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth your eyes saw my unformed body you said is it really possible that God could look into every body that's being created at conception and even before conception, Scripture teaches us. And is it possible that the God of all creation cares about your life and cares about my life? Well, it's possible. It's possible because, he, as, as an illustration, it says, He determines the number of stars and He calls them each by name. That's a lot of stars, amen? So I'd like to know, well, the, the, the great authority in our life, Google says that the number of stars in our universe is 200 billion trillion. I don't know what that means. I just wrote it down, to be honest with you. Or you could say that 200 sextillion stars are in our universe. I don't know what that, it's, it's two with 29 zeros. How does that grab you? It's a, it's a bunch of stars. And somehow scripture says that God knows the number of stars and he knows the number of them and he knows each of them by name. You think he knows your name? He sent his son to die for your sins and for my sins, amen? And the sins of all mankind. And, and apparently God has the ability to be personal with us and to knit us together in our mother's wound. And so much so he knows the number of stars and he calls them each by name. And he knows the number of hairs on your head. And for some of us, guys, it's getting easier and easier as each year goes by. <laughs> but some not. I've often wondered if he knows the number of hairs on your head, does he know, know the number of hairs in your hairbrush that came out this morning? <laughs> or that on the floor that your room was vacuuming up this morning? I, I don't know. But I, I do know our frame was not hidden when I was made in the secret place. I'm often encountering people around town and they'll walk up to me and they'll talk for a minute and she'll, they'll always say you know what I never knew you were that tall you don't look that tall on the stage because I sit in the back of the balcony where all the spiritual people sit <laughs> I said well I've been this tall for a long time so how tall are you I used to be almost 6'6 six, six. I'm probably around 6'5 now don't you shrink when you get old I mean you just kind of yeah I'm, I'm probably on that downhill slide Knit us together, made us, made our frames, knit us together in the secret place. So we, we make that our own. We own it. We, we, we live that. We look in the mirror and say, this is what God created, and this is what he wanted me to be, and how he wanted me to be in my life. If we're taking care of the temple of God. And we have that fellowship and that relationship with him. Then we close this morning and we look into God's creation and we can easily say that God's creation is purposeful. It has a purpose. It has a, a meaning. It has a job description. You just don't go through life living life for self. In fact, the New Testament teaches us that we die to self. And that we've been bought with the price, the very price of Christ. All the days ordained me were written 
in your book before one of them came to be. All the, or, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Often we look in those, all the days were ordained for me, that you were, you, you were given 70 years, you're given 7 years, you're given 98 years. And there, there's some truth in that, there's some value in that. We've, we trust God's sovereignty in that, although sin can often come and, 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 and have impacts on that. Perhaps more important than that all the days were ordained before one of them came to be and would, would, would be that God has a purpose for your life, that God has a reason for your existence. He has a, a purpose He wants you to fulfill and you live your life for that purpose. And it can be multiple purposes in your life depending on the, the, the age of life. And um, I, 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 in my age of life, don't need to teach my children to chew with their mouth closed or to, to have proper table manners or to be potty trained or that thing. and next uh, next th- th- there, there's a purpose in life for the next crowd that comes through i mean they're, they're uh, their hands are full they were working on a lot of that but my purpose in life has changed in a sense my ultimate purpose in life has not changed yet perhaps it will but all the days were ordained and god had a purpose for your life he has a purpose for my life depending on the cycles of life depending on the situation depending on the day that he has a purpose for your day tomorrow has something he wants to accomplish through you in your life in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, we're, we're by, by grace we're saved through faith. It's, it's not of ourselves. It's, it's, it's a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can be saved and win, boast. But when we're saved, we're God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he's prepared in advance for us to do. That you're God's workmanship. That your days are ordained and you're God's workmanship and you're created in Christ Jesus to, to allow God to accomplish something through your life. God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. He's prepared in advance. All the old days were ordained for me before one of them were written in your book. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. God knows the days. He's knit you together. He has a purpose for your life. He knows the number of stars and knows the number of hairs on your head. He desires to have a presence in your life. He desires to walk with you and talk with you along life's merry way. He desires to be with you in the morning when you get up and go to work. He desires to be with you in the morning when you ought to get up and go to work and do something. He's that kind of God. It's who he wants to be in our, in our life. So this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, next month, having more days we are allowed to live on this earth, we seek to fulfill his work. We seek to fulfill his purpose. We seek to ac- allow him to accomplish what he desires to accomplish in, in our lives. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works, God, are wonderful. I know that full well. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you look into each of our lives. And you have a purpose, you have a reason, you have a presence within us. Father, thank you that nothing is hidden from you. Thank you that you have a reason for our existence on this day. Father, may we fulfill it. Father, thank you that you're not a God that just turned your back on the world that you created and walked away. But you're a God that's with us, you're in us, you're among us. You're living through us. We are not our own as followers of Christ. Father, we're going to leave here in just a few minutes, and we ask that you remind us of that. That we leave this place, but we don't leave your presence. That you walk with us. That you live with us and in us. 
Father, may that be heavy on our hearts and our minds today. Speak to us today. Heal our hearts. Challenge our lives. Have your way within us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you stand today.